Some archaeological discoveries have to be seen to be believed. Finding old pieces of pottery or long-forgotten tombs is an everyday event for an archaeologist. But some days, and some discoveries, are special. We're talking about the kinds of finds that stand out from the crowd and make the whole world sit up and take notice. They seem almost too good to be true, but they're all real and they all have a story to tell. This video is a collection of those stories. Everything we think we know about the Sehuit stone in Peru is based on speculation. We think the Inca carved it, but we can't be sure of that. We also think that it might be a model of an irrigation system, but we can't be sure of that either. The monolith is covered with over 200 markings and carvings, some of which take the form of animals and marine life. Other carvings seem to resemble temples or houses, which has led some historians to suggest that it might be a scale model of the Abenque area, as it appeared 500 years ago at the time the stone was carved. The irrigation theory comes from the fact that the canal-like markings are deep enough for water to be poured through them, after which the flow of water could be observed. The Inca could theoretically have studied the water's flow before deciding whether to replicate the canals in the real world around them. As there's no evidence that corresponding canals were ever cut into the surrounding land, this theory can never be proven. Perhaps the Inca looked at the water and thought it was a bad idea. Or perhaps our understanding of the Saihuit stone is totally wrong. While we're on the topic of strange rock discoveries, check out these bizarre spiral-like structures in Nebraska, USA. They've existed for millions of years but went unnoticed until 1891 when they were examined by the geologist Dr. E. H. Barber. Even with his expertise, he struggled to explain them. The spirals are full of sand, and the white walls are made of an unknown material. Toward the bottom of each spiral is a pile of rodent bones. Baffled by his discovery, he named them Demonolix because of the nickname that local ranchers gave them, Devil's Corkscrews. Now, all these years later, the most popular theory is that the spirals are burrows created by ancient ancestors of the beaver, known as the Palaecastor, which became extinct over 20 million years ago. The deep burrows would have hidden them from predators and provided them with somewhere safe and warm to sleep. It's a convincing explanation, but it's still nothing more than a theory. Looking at them, it's easy to see why the local ranchers thought they were the devil's work. If you've ever seen the popular science fiction TV show Stargate, or the movie that inspired the series, you might find this next discovery somewhat familiar. It looks almost exactly like the dial home device that's used in the show. But it was created hundreds of years ago at the site of Saharasling in Karnataka, India. Nobody knows for sure who made these strange impressions in the rock, or what they used them for, but they were forgotten about for centuries, until they were found by chance as the local authorities decided to drain a local reservoir. The carvings and markings were hidden beneath the water. Some of the inscriptions on the surrounding rocks might be able to explain the purpose of the markings, but sadly the water has weathered them so severely that they can't be deciphered or understood. What's obvious is that the marks were made using a type of advanced rock cutting technique that should have been impossible for people living several centuries ago. It's an amazing archaeological site, and one that defies all attempts to explain it. There's a lot of controversy surrounding our next discovery. It looks so much like a mobile phone that it's impossible to imagine it as anything else, and yet it can't be a mobile phone. It was made 800 years ago. The invention of the telephone was a distant dream back then, let alone the invention of technology that would allow telephones to become portable. The baffling discovery was made during the excavation of a grave in the Austrian city of Salzburg, and is similar in style to the type of phone that was popular in the early 21st century, before the iPhone came along and touchscreens became popular. The object is made from clay, and the lettering on the buttons closely resembles Sumerian cuneiform, an early form of writing that was used thousands of years ago. Some people claim that the artifact is a modern hoax, but it's more likely that we just misunderstand it because we're looking at it through modern eyes. 
Obviously, a clay phone wouldn't be able to make any calls. So we wonder what this was used for. Our ancient ancestors were just as fascinated by the night sky as we are today. But they didn't have the advantage of powerful telescopes to help them observe it. Instead, they used objects like the armillary sphere. This sophisticated object is so old that we can't even be certain who invented it or when. But it's commonly believed that Anaximander of Miletus, the great Greek philosopher, came up with the first one 2,500 years ago. We know for sure that Hipparchus was using one 300 years later. The basic design of the armillary sphere changes from age to age, and location to location. But the fundamental shape is a globe surrounded by many rings, upon which the path of celestial objects through the sky at different times of the year is shown. Some of those predicted paths are astronomically correct, but the sphere is flawed because it places the Earth at the center of the universe. As a very early attempt at a comprehensive star chart, though, it must have been a very useful navigational tool for sailors. We've already covered the idea that our ancient ancestors may have been more advanced than we imagine when it comes to technology. And here's an object that proves it. It's an egg oven from ancient Egypt, and it's more suited to its purpose than anything we use to perform the same task today. The oven's design can be traced back more than 2,000 years ago, and yet they're still used in some rural parts of Egypt today. The purpose of the ovens is to hatch many eggs simultaneously, and they would have been used in the very early days of the poultry industry. The Egyptians appeared to have a better knowledge of the incubation process than the Europeans of the time, and they used that knowledge to create the ovens. That knowledge is still carefully guarded today. A rural Egyptian might happily show you their oven, but they won't tell you how they built it. Each oven has space for up to 4,000 eggs, and even contains a side room where an exhausted worker can rest after placing all those eggs inside the chambers. Here in 2020, we still don't have a totally accurate method of predicting earthquakes. It's a problem that the human race has been wrestling with for thousands of years. And the first known attempt to build an earthquake detector happened in China in the year 132. This is the seismograph designed by Zhang Heng, and it's incredibly sophisticated for a product of that era. Zhang's device works by placing it on the ground where it's sensitive enough to detect tremors from long distances. When tremors are detected, a pendulum within the seismograph swings. Should the swing become strong enough, it will dislodge a ball from the mouth of one of the ornate dragons on the side of the device, which then drops into the waiting mouth of one of the equally ornate frogs. This not only indicates the approach of the earthquake, but also gives the observer a rough idea of which direction the earthquake is happening at. We can't decide whether to be impressed that Zhang Heng was so far ahead of his time, or embarrassed that we haven't come up with a much better way of predicting earthquakes all these years later. It's often said that life in ancient Egypt was dependent upon the Nile River, and that's an accurate statement to make. Knowing how much water there was in the Nile was crucial for farmers, who needed to know when to plant their crops, what type of crop to plant, and how bountiful a harvest they could expect. In order to glean that knowledge, the Nilometer of Cairo was created. It takes the form of a huge octagonal column partially submerged into a well, around which a staircase was built, so that the priests in charge of measuring the water level could climb up and down it to make accurate measurements. This version of the Nilometer was built in the 9th century but it was made as a replacement for an older one that had stood for at least 5,000 years previously. Only priests or kings were allowed access to the Nilometer on the grounds that knowledge of whether a feast or a famine was coming was considered to be privileged information. The priests would pass the information on to farmers, but they wouldn't tell them how they came by the information. Whether or not you believe in aliens, you'll be familiar with the basic shape that aliens are supposed to have. Small humanoid figures with enormous eyes and elongated heads. In fact, the classic image of an alien looks exactly like these strange mummies in Paracas, Peru. To conspiracy theorists and UFO enthusiasts, 
The mummies and their distinctive skulls are evidence that aliens visited Earth thousands of years ago. You might even have seen viral images of them on social media before, where it was claimed that they contained non-human DNA. We can confirm that the mummies are approximately 2,000 years old, but we may be able to offer a more down-to-earth reason for their distinctive appearance. The superstitious residents who lived in Andean villages all that time ago wrapped the heads of their infants in rope and wood in the hope that their heads would grow long and thin, making them more closely resemble the gods they worshipped. Sadly, not all of the babies survived that body modification process, which explains these small mummies' existence. Of course, the big question is why these ancient rural Peruvians believed in gods that look so much like aliens. When Israeli archaeologist Pesa Baradan went exploring in a Dead Sea cave in 1961, he was hoping that he'd find something important or significant. He wasn't disappointed. That day, he found what's now known as the Nahal Mishmar Horde, a collection of more than 400 objects dating all the way back to the Copper Age right at the end of the Neolithic era. Someone went to a lot of trouble to hide these treasures. They were wrapped in straw, pushed into a crevice, and then covered by a rock. It's amazing that Pesa was able to find them at all. The most significant item in the hoard is the world's oldest known crown, which takes the form of a thick, heavy ring with depictions of vultures and strange doorways as ornaments. It was made about 6,000 years ago, and we have no idea whose head it sat upon. Nothing like the crown has ever been found elsewhere in this region or the wider world, and many of the objects are so unusual that they can't be identified. Given their age and their uniqueness, we can't rule out the possibility that these are the only surviving artifacts of a long-forgotten civilization. Today's Christian Bible is the King James Bible, created in the 17th century and heavily edited and modified from the original. It's likely that this ancient blackened Bible found in the Ankaran Justice Place in Turkey is a closer representation of the original author's intentions, and therein lies some controversy. This version of the Bible is written in gold on leather pages, with the text written in Aramaic. It's at least 1,500 years old and might even be 2,000, which would take it all the way back to the time of Christ. In it, there's a section known as the Gospel of Barnabas, who writes that Christ was a prophet rather than the Son of God and escaped crucifixion by sending Judas Iscaro to die in his place. He also calls Apostle Paul an imposter. The four Gospels we know today, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, were handpicked by the Council of Nicaea during the 3rd century, with all other Gospels that contradicted those chosen four cast aside. If this Turkish Bible is the genuine artifact that many people believe it to be, it would mean that Christian beliefs may be based on a 1,700-year-old twisting of the original text. Followers of fashion might believe that the trend for expensive, decorative footwear is a fairly recent invention. But that isn't the case. We know that for sure, because in June 2020, this woman's boot was discovered in the frozen ground of the Altai Mountains. It's beautifully made, it's elaborately decorated, and it's more than 2,300 years old. We have two things to thank for the excellent preservation of the boot. The first is the permafrost that exists in the mountains of Siberia, which protects almost everything that it freezes. And the second is the fact that the Scythian people had very thorough burial practices. They buried their dead in large wooden cabins at the bottom of deep holes, and then covered the cabin's rooftops with layers of moss and birch bark. That process has allowed this beautiful boot, which is made of leather wrapped in red cloth and then decorated with tin, gold foil, and pyrite crystals, to survive in wearable condition for more than two millennia. Intriguingly, there's no wear on the bottom of the boot. Either the woman who wore this didn't do much walking, or it was designed specifically for her funeral and burial. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel.
Thanks for watching and see you soon.